The more you learn about the moon's relationship to Earth, the harder it becomes to ignore a nagging question. Is the moon too perfect? It's not just that the moon is helpful, it's uniquely helpful. It supports life on Earth in ways that seem oddly precise, regulating the tides, stabilizing our climate, and protecting us from asteroids. But the most obvious example of this eerie perfection is something you've probably seen with your own eyes, a solar eclipse. Roughly every 18 months, somewhere on Earth, the moon passes directly in front of the sun, creating a total eclipse. And in that moment, something strange happens. The moon fits perfectly over the sun, blocking its light entirely, but just barely, so that the glowing corona still rings the edges. It's an incredible coincidence. The sun is 400 times wider than the moon, but it's also 400 times farther away, which means that they appear to be the same size in the sky, but only from exactly where we are. And that's not common. Most moons orbit around the equators of their planets. Ours doesn't. Its orbit is tilted, just enough to line up with the path of the sun and allow eclipses to happen at all. And while we tend to treat eclipses as celestial curiosities, they've played a major role in our understanding of the universe. The first direct evidence for Einstein's theory of general relativity came from observing the way starlight bent around the sun during an eclipse. Some of our most important discoveries have only been possible because of this strange alignment. Now, to be fair, the moon is slowly moving away from the Earth at about an inch and a half each year. Eventually, it won't appear large enough to fully block the sun, and solar eclipses will become a thing of the past. But for the entirety of human history, and for millions of years to come, we just happen to be here at the perfect moment to witness them. And that may be the most unsettling thing of all, because coincidences this precise always raise the same question. Is it really a coincidence? Follow for part six, where we'll push that question even further, because some scientists believe the moon may not be a moon at all.